Welcome to another edition of the Invisible Wheelchair Podcast. I'm Donald Grodoff, family coach with FamilyOCD.com and FocusedHealthyFamily.com. In the Invisible Wheelchair Podcast series, I delve into the hidden characteristics of OCD, anxiety, and anxiety disorders. The things that most people don't see, that are behind closed doors, and shut within the mind about anxiety. My goal with these podcasts is to bring about awareness of Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, or OCD. Understand that I am not a doctor, therapist, or counselor, and the content, information, resources, and ideas that are talked about and brought up here in these podcasts are things that I have used, discovered, or have been recommended to me, and I always recommend to seek additional professional help in finding solutions for yourself. Thank you for listening, and enjoy the podcast. This podcast was recorded August 14, 2017. Today I'm stepping a little out of boundaries, I guess, for myself. Most of my recordings are done, kind of scripted out a little bit, written out, so I have some notes. But I call this my off-the-cuff podcast. And this is the very first one. What brought this one about, uh, recently I had, my, my wife bought a loaf of cinnamon raisin bread and I had a piece of it and it toasted it up put some butter on it and this flush of memories came back to my to my mind that when, when I was a kid I'm, I'm a kid of the 60s basically that was a treat for us we would get a loaf of cinnamon raisin bread and it was such a treat even though I didn't care for raisins back then I liked it in that combination and with that because it was such a treat you gotta understand back then we didn't have we didn't go to the grocery store for that we had a bread man we had a milk man and what what came to mind at that point was we also had a fuller brush man because you got to understand, back in that in my childhood days, in the early '60s, stores that we didn't have WalMarts, you know, we didn't have these huge grocery stores that had delicatessens in them and um, refrigerated, you know, they were pretty much dry goods stores, really. Um, I, I I can't remember if they had frozen or not. They may have, but they really didn't have refrigerated and fresh stuff like breads. You had people that delivered that to your door. So we, like I said, we had a milkman. They'd put two milk bottles out or a bottle of milk out each, well, I think once a week, if I'm not mistaken. And then then we had a bread man, and he'd always come knock on the door, go, bread man! And you would come out, and you would give him an order, and he would go get what you ordered out of his truck. And what I what brings me to this is... The Fuller Brush Man. Again, we didn't have Walmarts back then. I mean, we had Five and Dimes. You know, um, ours were Benjamin Franklin stores. Um, So you didn't have as much uh, availability of different products you needed. So the Fuller Brush Man was the guy who brought different cleaning, cleaning materials and different somewhat novelty stuff, too. But in this particular case, we had a fuller brush man that was a one-armed fuller brush man. And I used to sit in amazement behind my mom. She would answer the door, and I'd stand behind her, kind of in her coattails, I guess you'd say, watching this guy because he, he was one-armed. He, had, he was missing, I don't remember, what, I guess, I think it was his uh, left arm. But he would take his, his other arm, and he'd, he would take cans of stuff out of his bag, flip them up in the air, grab them, and show them, turn it around, do, you know, and then flip them and put them back into a case. It was kind of fun to watch. He had a kind of an entertainment to it. And what, what was interesting out of that story, 
I'll tell you the, what, what's behind the story, but what's interesting about this story is one day, I, I can remember this very, very vividly, I, I kind of leaned around to my mom and said, Mom, Mom, why is he missing his arm, you know? And I can remember this guy bending over and looking me dead in the eye, very serious face, and he said, don't ever stick your arm out the window of a car. And I, my eyes got really wide, and I kind of backed away. And I can remember from that time on, for a long time, I would never open the window in the car. I wouldn't, you know, I used to uh, put my hand out and fly my hand in the wind of a car, you know. And I didn't do it after that for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> but the point of this is, uh, I'm going. I'm going to put this in October of this is 2017 I'm going to play this in October and w the the reason for it is I start thinking about the fact of what he was October uh, later on this month in October I'm going to be uh, playing an interview by a gentleman by Wayne Connell who has the Invisible Disabilities Association very interesting interview and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you to stay tuned for that but what I start thinking about with this gentleman is that back then, the way we treated people who had disabilities, they weren't called disabilities at the time. That's a more modern age terminology. Back then it was handicapped and, and even cruder terminology we use, like cripples, you know. And when it came to mental disabilities, we were even more cruel. You know, we would call them dumb are retarded, are crazy. And I think, you know, we have stepped a lot more forward, especially especially when it comes to physical disabilities, you know, giving, now we have handicapped parking, we have, you know, handicapped accessible uh, bathrooms and parks and different sidewalks, even though that's still got, a, I think, a long way to go, to be very honest with you. I don't think we handle it as well as even we need to. But what I think about a lot, because the realm that I, I work in is the, um, the mental handicaps, the mental disabilities, and how when we talk about this with my interview with Wayne, we talk about the invisible disabilities, the ones that people can't see, and that we're, as a society, not handling very well, I don't believe. It's hard for us to see somebody else that isn't seem to be acting quite right, but we don't know what's going on with them. So we assume things. We assume they're stupid, or we assume that they um, they have problems of some sort, but we don't know and we don't care. You know, what I like to tell my clients is, how do you step into somebody else's shoes just for two minutes and... Try to think about what they may be going through and try to get a different picture of it. You know, we, we, we assume a lot and we see a child that goes through a tantrum in the Walmart or a child that's active and running around and bouncing off the walls and we assume that they're bad parents, or this is just a wild child, or that this person is crazy. And we don't think a lot of times, that, and we're not very open to being open about that. That's That sounds a little redundant or something there, but I guess what I'm, you know, I, I a lot of times sit, and I'll be in an office somewhere and a child will be there and the child's running around maybe getting very loud and I think about people that look at him with disgust and I, I I feel for the parent I feel almost embarrassed for the parent because I can imagine what they're going through because I've been through that that it's a tough place to be and that the person that is giving that disgusted look or their frown look or even saying something I've seen people say you know tell people can't you manage that child you know and I think of that parent and I'm thinking you know they're probably doing the best they can 
they probably don't realize how some of the foods that they're feeding this child is adding into what this child is going through. And so they don't have, you know, I, when I work with clients, I, a lot of times when we're working on something, we're tapping through something, I'll throw in the fact of that, that manual that should have come with the umbilical cord, you know. Don't you wish that uh, there was a, uh, a manual that came, that dropped out after birth, you know, in a little plastic bag, you know, that you could open up and it tell you what steps to take initially or what steps to take at all. But there isn't. So each parent is going by what they learned from their parents, if that is a good situation, or even if it's not a good situation, they still take on what the parent has given them example for. So they're doing most times, I would say, I feel like it's about 90% of the times or more, that they're doing the best they know how. And the way I feel like we abuse those parents and we abuse that child or we abuse the person that's having a rough time is by giving them the dirty looks, by giving them the the talk to or the the scolding, you know, kind of look and attitude. Whereas we should be able, we should try to maybe step into their shoes and, in, and instead of assuming the worst, assume that they're no, they're doing their best. And right now their best doesn't seem to fit with what you're doing. And it would be nice if they controlled that child. But really it's not about the control of the child. And we can talk about that. That's another whole subject. But for a change, I think even in the society we have today, especially, we need to learn to be able to step into somebody else's shoes, no matter how crazy they might seem, and wonder what they went through in their life. Wonder what kind of examples they got in their life that led them to this place so that we can respond to them from that more compassionate place. Of course, assuming any time is, is not always good, but wouldn't it be better to assume the best versus assuming the worst? Wouldn't it be best to assume that this person is out there doing the best they can with their financial situation, with their medical situation, with their mental situation, with their physical situation, and give them the benefit of the doubt. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be what we all need? So what I, I guess the reason for this is one, to change awareness, because I think that's what Mr. Connell is doing with his Invisible Disabilities Association. And that's what I believe I'm trying to do with the Invisible Wheelchair Podcast, is I focus on OCD, because it is something that people need to understand, that even when you do the best that you can, OCD can do it worse. Even though you're doing the best you can, OCD can be very powerful. And even though you're doing the best that you can, OCD can take over and cause you to do things that you don't really want to do. So I, I advocate for OCD and for anxiety for that matter and anxiety disorders. But I really want to bring about awareness that these mental disorders and I'll I'll add in here what I've found before is in most cases when I'm dealing with somebody with OCD or even, you know, the uh, things like ADHD, you find a split in the, in the parents. You find a split. You find one that believes it, wants to do everything they can about it, and you find one of the parents that just believes they should be able to get over it, that this is just, that's not a real... There's not a problem there. It's just them being non-disciplined or 
But we have to understand that in mental disorders especially, that there is a lot going on in the brain. A lot of problems that are caused causing this in the brain. And those are not easy to control. They're a lot of times can be out of our control and need to be somehow brought back to our control. But we have to understand as outsiders that that's what could be happening. And it could be the, you know, like I say, the financial part. You know, when you ha when you go through this, you also end up going through finances because you're trying for every kind of miracle that could solve it. And so you, you're, you're paying out for that. And I talk about that in one of the other uh, uh, podcasts. So again, my purpose in this one is awareness factor. Being aware that no matter what's going on, we should try our best to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes and assume the better of them than the worst. Assume that they're doing the best they can with the knowledge they have and with the abilities and examples that they have been given. So I asked you, listening to this, to do the same. Instead of frowning or giving a discouraged look, put an attitude of blessing, of encouragement, of assumption of the positive or the forward thinking, assuming that they are doing their best no matter what it may look like, and giving them the benefit of the doubt in what you do and what they do. So, this is my first off the cuff, and I will probably do this periodically. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you got one little piece of nugget out of this that might be helpful, that might make you think the next time you're in a situation that's uncomfortable for yourself and for the person that's going through whatever they're going through, that you might take a few minutes to take a deep breath and maybe even help them if you can, but at least give them benefit of the doubt and a smile. And let them know that it's okay. Anyway, have a great day. And thank you for listening. That concludes this podcast. Please leave me a comment or question below. That gives me good direction where to go on future podcasts. I would love to hear your invisible wheelchair stories if you're willing to share it. If you would... Go to InvisibleWheelchair.com and click on Tell Your Story. I want to remind you that OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, is treatable. And I can help you get past OCD. So, if you have heard this podcast and others, and you feel like you need further assistance and would like to spend some time with me working through any issues you have, then feel free to book a session at FocusedHealthyFamily.com or FamilyOCD.com or you can call me at 704-562-1630. I also offer $85 off initial discovery session if you mention that you heard it on this podcast. I hope you have enjoyed this podcast and will join me for the next one. Remember to keep tapping, talking, and transcending your life to new heights. Thank you. Have a great day.